I'm John Sigmund. I'm the general manager of the reservoir. Let me tell you where uh, it stands and what the situation is with the reservoir. Not to be redundant, but everybody knows it rained a lot. It rained a lot in Carthage and Walnut Grove, 12 inches. Uh, all that water comes to the reservoir and it has to go through. What comes in has to go out. We can retain very little water. But we are and will continue to hold as much as possible. We'll use all the capacity in the lake that we have to attenuate peak flows downstream. We don't have much capacity this time around. In 2020, we did have a lot of extra capacity because the lake was down to the Battle of the Giant Slovenia, uh, which, by the way, we eliminated. However, uh, this time we didn't have that. We had a little bit of room, but then the amount of direct rainfall that fell on the lake took that up immediately. So we're having to release more and more water. This morning, after our uh, conference call with the Weather Service, USGS, or Corps of Engineers, and others, uh, we increased the outflow to 55,000 cubic feet per second. That's a lot of water. Uh, we have to do that because the lake was continuing to rise. Uh, if the lake rises, ultimately uh, the dam will fail because it's designed to do that. At a certain elevation of 300, water comes over the emergency spillway, it self erodes. Uh, contrary to popular belief, we don't have a way to activate that with a switch or with dynamite or anything like that. It self erodes, and then you're suddenly putting 10 feet of water from the lake downriver, and that's an uncontrolled situation that we don't want to have to face. So we're continuing to let water out. What we're doing now is letting a little more out than what's coming in in order to attenuate the peak that's going to hit us on Monday night, Tuesday morning. That peak is estimated at this time to be 67 to 72,000 gallons uh, cubic feet per minute, per second, excuse me. 67 to 72,000 cubic feet per second. That's a lot of water. That would run the river up to 36 feet. Uh, and the the uh, estimates of the river stages and so forth are made by the Weather Service, by the experts in Slidell, and they know what they're doing. Uh, right now, at the uh, flow of, uh, I get all these numbers in my head, at, at, the, at the flow of 55,000, we would expect the river to rise to 35 feet. But we don't want to go any higher than that if possible. At 35 and a half, we start getting water in houses, and uh, Ms. Lowe called me, and she was very concerned about it because she got water in her house two years ago. Things like that we need to be aware of, and we want to do the best job we can to prevent that. However, the ultimate uh, is the safety of the entire citizens downstream, and if the dam goes, then we don't want to we don't want to have to face that. So we will let as much water out as possible. I think we can hold. What we're doing now for 24 hours, uh, in the morning we'll have another conference call with the Weather Service Corps of Engineers, U.S. Geological Survey, the City of Jackson often attends that, and we will we'll determine what we do for the next 24 hours. But at this point, that's what it looks like. We would be facing a river which is now at 32, 33. We'd be facing a river of 35 for certain. Uh, that water's already on the way. We uh, hope we can stay away from the river of 36. Do we take questions now or later? Happy end. Okay. Marty. Hi, I'm Marty Pope uh, with the National Weather Service in Jackson, a hydrologist. I uh, wanted to let you know that we were very fortunate last night that we had a rainfall that fell south of the lake. <laughs> we had some massive, some pretty good flash flooding last evening. So we were very fortunate. What's good about that, just a little rain that did fall upstream did not hurt us any. All the rivers and streams up above the reservoir are either falling or, at, or holding steady. The only place we see any rise right now is at the upper end of the lake at Ratliff's Ferry where the water is continuing to rise there as, as it moves towards the, towards the spillway. Uh, currently, we're, we're looking at, like you said, right now, we have a, the current stage at Jackson here is at 3325, 
And uh, we should be tomorrow, based upon what John's discharging, somewhere between 34 and a half and 35 feet uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, so we're, we're hoping to keep everything uh, with, try to hold it and go up just as, as we have to as, with this. So these calls that we're doing with the, uh, with the Pearl River Valley is very instrumental in helping us to keep as much uh, uh, control of what's going on as we possibly can. One of the things that we need to let you guys know is the fact that uh, uh, this is not a short event. You know, we're, we're not going to even crest until, um, say, Tuesday morning here. The water after that will stay high for a while. When we get heavy rainfall with a high river, there's a potential for flash flooding along the streams that are inflowing into the river. In neighborhoods, if that water stays in there for any time, it will have a possibility of doing it because we're going to see afternoon thunderstorms. We could see some, uh, you know, like we did yesterday, where a big line moves up through the area. We could see those kind of things for a while, but it is a, a, a long-standing thing. I want to also give people an idea. Back in, uh, back in uh, 2020, the gauge at Highway 80 was, was not there, but they had a 40 point, they get 42.9 feet on the Lakeland gauge. So if you are going to our website, weather.gov slant Jan and click on uh, rivers and lakes, you can actually go and find river gauges. And the, uh, the one that's there is the Lakeland gauge too. It got to 42.9. We're looking at possibly going to around 42 feet this time. So you can look at that to help know where you stand, especially in the northeastern Jackson area. Um, and also, we want to just remind you guys, please make sure that uh, you don't, nobody drives into this area, into the water areas. Don't, like I said, don't do tourist type stuff into there. So I, and when, like the Weather Service always says, turn around, don't drown. Make sure to uh, don't put yourself in harm's way. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, before I provide an uh, update from the city of Jackson, I think it is imperative that I recognize the amount of support that the city of Jackson uh, and its residents have received. So I want to take a moment to thank all of the agencies represented here at this moment uh, that are allowing us to be uh, prepared in advance of the event that we expect Monday into Tuesday. Uh, it is their support that allows us to get the sandbags out. It is their support that allows us to get the critical information as to what we can expect. Uh, it is the support of uh, our constituent services department uh, that provides and, and is able to, to meet people where they are, our fire department, our police department, the county. Uh, the list goes on and on. And so I want to first begin with that statement of appreciation. Going forward, uh, I would like to let our residents know that we are expecting waters to begin to impact neighborhoods as early as Sunday evening. And so uh, we are trying to give you this timeline so that you can prepare as soon as possible. Uh, if you were one of the early impacted communities in 2020, it is likely that you will be one of the early impacted communities in 2022. Residents in those impacted areas uh, should be ready to leave within 48 hours. JTRAN is on standby to help those who plan to evacuate. However, they cannot once the waters have moved in. And so our city services, our transportation is here to help you, but you have to make a plan in advance. You cannot wait until the final moment because at some point we will cease service of JTRAN in those impacted areas uh, especially uh, because they will be in, uh, unable to, to uh, proceed. Code enforcement is working to create a flyer that will be taken door to door for those impacted areas. That information on the flyer should uh, be about emergency kits, uh, shelter information, and pertinent city phone numbers for assistance. And so you can anticipate seeing code services within your community, uh, communities. Uh, they are trying to provide vital information to help support your evacuation and your preparations. Uh, I want to thank the partnership of the Hines County uh, Emergency Management uh, and also of the Red Cross. Uh, they will be helping to assist in the opening of shelters as needed. Uh, we will be able to provide more information uh, later within this press conference as it relates to those shelters. 
Patrol will be stepped up in all affected areas to ensure safety of not only residents, uh, but also safety of property. So those residents that are hesitant to evacuate out of concern for your property, the city of Jackson, uh, along with the county, uh, we will be working to step up patrols to protect your property. So don't allow that to be an impediment uh, for you saving your life and saving uh, those lives of the other individuals within your home. Sandbags are available today at Michael Avalon uh, until 5 p.m. And there will be sandbags available Saturday and Sunday from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. And so, once again, please do not wait until the last moment and create a rush to get those sandbags uh, that will make it difficult for you to uh, retrieve the sandbags that you need, uh, but also put increased burden on the individuals that are there to serve uh, and help support your needs. Constituent services can deliver sandbags to those who have no other means of picking them up. This is not, you know, uh, just an ability that you just call because you know, it's an inconvenience to you and therefore you want constituent services to do that. We want to reserve their assistance for those that are incapable of retrieving their sandbags for themselves. 311 is also available if you need information or assistance when it comes to evacuating during the flood. Keep in mind that floodwaters will remain on the ground for several days as was stated earlier. Uh, and so you should make a plan to be gone for several days up to as much as two weeks. And so in your preparation kits, we want you to consider uh, that you're not just anticipating for uh, the events on, on Monday into Tuesday. You're preparing for that water to be with us for some time, uh, and so you should prepare as such. The City of Jackson's website is being updated to offer guidance when, a pa when, when packing uh, or preparing your emergency kit, and we will provide all other uh, vital information that we can house on that website uh, to assist you. I will provide additional updates at the conclusion of the press conference. Good afternoon, Joey Perkins, Director of Hines County Emergency Management. Uh, the main thing that we wanna get out uh, right now is uh, to prepare yourself, to prepare now. Uh, you know, that could possibly save your life. Uh, knowing your risk is important. Uh, you know, if you flooded in 2020, it's very possible you're likely to flood uh, with this event. So make preparations to evacuate if you need to. Uh, let your family, let friends know uh, where you're going. Keep in touch, uh, you know, communicate with others. Uh, prepare your home. Uh, again, um, patrols will be uh, through there. You know, if you leave your, uh, lock your house up, leave your belongings. <clears throat> uh, avoid the flood waters. Uh, once the water rises, again, uh, don't walk through the water, don't drive through the water. Uh, turn around, don't drown. Uh, the emergency management will continue to uh, assess uh, the situation and work with the city and the state uh, as needed. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Tamika Smith Jewett. I'm the Executive Director of the Southwest Mississippi Chapter. And on behalf of our entire Red Cross workforce, I want you to know that we are committed to alleviate human suffering. Just like everyone else in this room, as the mayor mentioned, it takes a team effort. So we're glad to be a part of this effort and making sure our communities are safe. So I also want to share that our volunteers are on standby. I just left our office and there's a group there and they've been at this for several days now. And we also have shelters, that's the good news. We have two shelters that we have identified. One of those locations will open up this evening around six o'clock and that is located at the Jackson Police Academy 3000 St. Charles Street here in Jackson. This information will be shared on our social media site. We'll also share it with the city 
of Jackson for their website as well. The other location, we will release that um, later on when the need arises. But again, this is a team effort. We are proud to uh, be a part of so many amazing people who want to protect the citizens of Jackson. Um, I definitely want to also include that we've heard this message over and so many times, prepare, prepare, prepare. And I just want to people at home who are listening to know that this is not a time to be scared. You don't have to be scared in your preparation. <laughs> and if you're not in the impacted areas, also take this time to prepare your families uh, for other disasters. So um, if you need tips on how that's done, we have lots of information at redcross.org. You can go to our website, and that um, is Red Cross, I mean, our, uh, our social media sites as well, and we have lots of tips there. Feel free to follow us on our social media pages. We have a Facebook and Twitter um, accounts as well as Instagram, and that information and all of Red Cross uh, services throughout this event will be posted there as well. So stay safe, everyone. Don't be afraid. Just prepare now. Hi. Good afternoon. Joseph Wade, Assistant Chief of Police. First of all, again, our hearts and prayers go out to the, anyone who has been victimized or suffered any loss during this flooding or possibly will be impacted by the flooding anticipated for next week. I want to assure you that the hardworking men and women of the Jackson Police Department are ready, available, and committed to mitigating this event. We have all hands on deck. If you leave your home, feel assured that we're going to have extra patrol in your area. We're concerned about your life being safe. We'll take care of the property aspect. We know that there is a contingency of individuals who want to victimize people in these times, we'll be ready for them. I guarantee you. Uh, we continue with our planning and preparation. We're evaluating our resources. We're assessing our manpower. And we'll make sure that we have every aspect of this event covered. We ask for your patience, your prayers, in dealing with this event. We know a lot of people are going to be impacted. We've worked these types of events before. And when you lose your home, there's not any words that we can say, you know, to help you get past that. But we're going to do everything we can in the meantime to make sure you're safe, the city is safe, and we get past this event. Thank you. Good afternoon. Tyree Jones, Hines County Sheriff. Hines County Sheriff's Office has identified more resources to be able to work collectively with you, the mayor, the other citizens, and people that are responsible for responding to this event as we do expect it to come about within the next few days as well. We have identified resources. We will be, there will be extra patrol available in the city of Jackson, but not only that, we do know that there will be parts of Edwards near the Big Black River that will be affected, as well as Terry as well, near the Rosemary, Rosemary and uh, Marble Monkey area as well. We've identified resources to be able to assist in those areas as well. Again, we just ask that everyone take heed to the precautions, make sure that you leave your property, take the necessary things that you need to take with you, but rest assured between the Hines County Sheriff's Office the Jackson Police Department and other law enforcement agencies. We will be available on site to protect your property until you are able to you return to your homes as well. That's all we have, thank you. I just want to take a moment uh, to speak to another matter uh, that has relationship to the needs of residents at this time, uh, but not specifically related to the, uh, to the flooding. Uh, I want uh, it to be known that Byram is dealing with a water line break, uh, which has challenged some areas of Byram with either low pressure or no pressure, and crews are working near Gary Road uh, in order to uh, make the, the necessary repairs and uh, for pressure to increase in that area. Also, there are parts of South Jackson, uh, an issue was reported last night around 11 p.m. 
uh, crews are checking valves uh, at that location to determine what is causing an issue with the well. This is not associated with the water treatment facility. Uh, this is a concern with the well. Uh, many of our wells uh, experience uh, challenges when uh, power was lost due to waters rising and, and challenges there. Uh, and so there have been repeated efforts to correct uh, whatever complications have been established with the well system as a re relation to that. Uh, we hope to have an update once the inspection is complete uh, and then the repairs can be made. Uh, so I wanted to provide that information uh, with respect to the ongoing water delivery. I want to emphasize uh, that constituent services is prioritizing the distribution of sandbags right now. Uh, water will be made available um, at multiple loca uh, locations across the city. Uh, we will be working with your council representation uh, for them to help coordinate in each ward uh, places uh, where water can be picked up. Uh, and so I want to make certain that that is understood. Uh, and with that, I think we can open the floor for any questions that you have. Uh, well, it's, it's a little soon to know. Uh, you know, what we are is expecting the worst, you know, and praying for the best. Um, and so I think that's the, the sentiment of everyone who's standing before you. I, will like, I would like to note that we have received excellent coordination and support from MEMA, uh, which often is the, uh, the liaison between other state agencies uh, to provide that support. Uh, in the 2020 event, Wildlife and Fisheries did not hesitate to act and respond to help uh, with boats and, and uh, support people. Uh, neither did the county or our fire department, uh, which has a, a limited supply of boats as well. Uh, so that, you know, I, I would not have any fear that they would not have an adequate and appropriate response in the event that we find ourselves in that place. Yes. This may be for Mr. Pope or anybody else, but I know we're, we're hoping for rain south of here, but what is the, or what is the expectation north which would impact the, the reservoir more? Well, right now what we're looking at is, is uh, just the, the chances of showers, just like in the afternoon type showers that we have. And uh, today's a little more, and we have a little greater chance today than we do tomorrow, and I think beginning and tomorrow and through early next week, I believe we're going to be just more afternoon thunder showers. But if you remember, we can get some pretty heavy, heavy uh, type and fairly widespread rains even on those. So it's going to be something we're going to have to monitor each day. Can we expect to see additional news conferences over the weekend as developments arise? Uh, absolutely. Um, as, as we have shared with you, you're going to see a lot of us over the coming days uh, in preparation. Uh, for the events that we expect Monday uh, into Tuesday. Uh, and so there will be additional information. Uh, just in this moment, I'm looking at our data scientists. So to the extent that we can provide data of what it, we experienced in 2020, uh, we'll release all available information. Uh, the unfortunate events that we suffered as recently as two years ago uh, has served not only as a lesson in how we prepare, how we uh, fill gaps that, that we you know, quite possibly have not filled in, in past years. Uh, and so we have unfortunately had uh, a lot of experience in this area recently. And so that is why I think you're seeing such a coordinated, uh, well-prepared response. And, and we hope to make sure that we don't drop the ball anywhere along the way so that we communicate uh, as frequently um, as need be. Mr. Mayor, I don't see anybody here from the school system yet because they here. Was well, the light impact them or is this, a, is this smooth? Well, well I, I do want it to be known that while they are not physically present here, uh, they have made contact with me and I'm certain other agencies to make certain that their interests are represented and, and that they're able to communicate uh, with the scholars and their parents. Uh, we know that um, I think McLeod Elementary uh, and Casey could potentially be impacted. Uh, and so they are following uh, the information that is being provided to advise those parents and scholars in those areas uh, what they will uh, be instructing them to do. And so, 
Well, there will be areas that are impassable, uh, and so it will certainly affect school bus routes. Uh, I will not get ahead of them uh, and communicate, you know, what adjustments will be needed uh, or what uh, service will be uh, canceled in, in, that, in that moment. Uh, but I will, uh, you know, advise that they have been in contact uh, and they are communicating uh, in this process. Thank you. Can I make some clarification real quick? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Got, I'd like to make some clarifications for you guys regarding uh, that we, the city of Jackson has actually funded the traditional river gauge at Highway 80 in Jackson. That is the gauge that we're projecting to go to 30, 36 feet, 36 and, yeah, 36 feet. And, uh, but like I said, they've also recently, I mean in the last couple of years, have started funding the Highway 25 gauge and this gauge is to help every people in the northern parts of the city. So we have that particular gauge. I'm trying to just make sure we dis, there's a distinction between those two gauges. The 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 one back the uh, how the Highway 25 gauge, Lakeland Drive gauge, is actually going to go approximately to 42. There's a very difference. So you can watch those gauges, but remember, just there are a very different gauge. But you got to make sure don't get those two confused. Highway 80, 36 feet, what the gauge will get to. Highway 25, the gauge will get up to 42 feet, approximately. So, and it got up to 42.91 back in 2020. So just to let you know, just to clarify that, uh, th those distinctions, and the, the city of Jackson for funding those has been a great thing to have that, especially that uh, Lakeland Drive gauge come online, because that helps us out quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So the forecast is still for 36. I, Mr. Sigmund yep. mentioned something about trying to hold it at 35, or is that at a different no, it's 30, we're talking about the, thir the official gauge that we've got the forecast in is 36 feet at Jackson. We're just trying to give people more of an opportunity to know what's closer to where they are. That other gauge that's on Highway, uh, Highway 25, the Lakeland gauge, uh, there's a lot of people live right next to that gauge and it's good that they would have that resource. But that one now will go to about 42 feet and it's, it has nothing to do with, with the height of the water or anything, it's, it's just its just at a different level in a sense, the way they have it set. But that'll be a good gauge for you to watch, knowing that the top level of that one is 42 versus the top level that we're gonna to get to on Jackson, on the Highway 80 gauge, the official Jackson gauge is 36 feet. So just to clarify that, I think that's something we need to make sure we clarify. Uh, and, and I did want to uh, follow up on the earlier question. I, I <coughs> neglected to, uh, you know, communicate the note that I received. Wildlife and fishery, uh, they have offered SRT boats uh, and they have attended briefings uh, this morning. And so uh, we do expect their support and we're grateful for it uh, as we are uh, for all the agencies that have been helping us. All right. Thank you. I'm sorry, I actually had one question. About how many homes are we estimating may be impacted? Not like extreme numbers, but uh, we'll, we have modeling. Uh, I don't have right in front of me the exact number. Do you have the exact number of homes? No, sir. We will have an updated map from the Corps of Engineers very soon. We should have that number and the map. Okay. So uh, when we, you know, proceed with the, uh, the press conferences that are sure to follow, uh, we'll look to have that information for you. Okay. Thank you.